a global pandemic, devastating wildfires, homes destroyed, families separated, many businesses closed on a permanent basis. The world around us, it seems, is in deep mourning. There are intense emotions of fear and anger. And many, many are in a fight or flight reaction. Desperate times, desperate times. Desperate times are often ones which, in my view, employ very extreme measures in an attempt to escape whatever is before all of us. It's our survival instinct. So what are we called to do? What are we called to do? Well, we are in the midst of an opportunity, one of transformation. While our outer world is in the midst of a great shift. Deep within is a mighty moving force of divine spirit, which I believe is in a state of chrysalis being yet to be revealed. We are in the midst, my friends. We are in the midst. And I have a reading from today's Science of Mind, which the magazine, which ties in perfectly with my lesson and the times we are experiencing. And it's titled, The Meaning of Peace in Science of Mind magazine for today, October 4th. And at the top of the page is a quote by Alice Ritchie, and it is this. All goes well with us when we keep ourselves in tune with spirit and adhere to its will and law. And in the body of the page of the Science of Mind, is a quote from the 1938 edition of the Science of Mind textbook. And that is found on page 86, and I quote, the laws of mind or spirit are not different from the laws of chemistry and physics. Metaphysics begins where physics leaves off. Everything is movement. Everything we can take hold of and analyze all things in the physical world or the world of form are in a certain rate of vibration and are an effect. This is a result of an infinite thinker thinking mathematically. End quote. I believe we are in this right now, all of this for our own transformation of peace and poise and of course, pause, P-A-U-S-E. A time to reflect upon those ideas which provide us joy, a time to reflect away from those ideas of fear and loss and dis-ease. Now is the perfect moment to invite the divine wisdom within us to help us find a place and to know we are safe. Now is the perfect moment to recognize the powerful nature of our faith, remembering we are one in spiritual idea and consciousness, yet, yet, individualized as our unique selves. So I asked you, what are we called to do? Now I ask you, 
what are we called to be? What are we called to be now? In the Science of Mind text on page 417, Dr. Ernest Holmes tells us, and I quote, to assert our individuality is to rise above the law of averages into that more highly specialized use of the spiritual law, which brings freedom rather than bondage, joy in the place of grief and wholeness instead of sickness. We cannot do this unless we are first willing to judge not according to appearances. In this judging not according to appearances, we are impressing the spiritual law with a new idea of ourselves, a less limited idea. And we are learning to think independently of any existing circumstances, anywhere, anywhere, end quote. So beloveds, now is the perfect moment to think and to believe and to embrace a greater idea, to turn away from those aspects of the past that do not provide joy. And in turn, live your life. Today's lesson titled, The Joy of Reflection, comes as a result of how I've managed to process through the numerous experiences life has provided. And boy, they have provided. <laughs> Notice I emphasize provided. To move away from victim to victor, to move away from feeling loss or opportun to opportunity. Each experience is our own, our own unique personal journey and should not be judged as greater or lesser, either by ourselves or anyone else. If you can think of experiences as glimpses of opportunity, a reveal or a glimpse, not only of what's going on inside, your true inner nature, but also your response tendencies, which are those immediate reactions, which I refer to as our first responders. The first response we have to any experience that is occurring in front of us. Now that first responder many times is our inner child. Now this inner child is your place. Your place where not only for your first responder emotions, not only where your first responder emotions reside, many of them like fear and anger, sadness and anxiety. That place that's often prone to as I referred to in an earlier lesson, tantrums of spirit. This inner storehouse also shares space with happiness, peace, grace, love, and joy. The joy of reflection is in seeing what our first response is in here. to that life out there. And then knowing the best way to utilize whatever response shows itself. Whatever response. As students in life, it's vital we learn our tendencies and which of those direct our lives. Are they from love and joy? Or are they from fear? Our suggested book for October is The Book of Joy, 
And I'll try and uh, I don't know if it's going to show the book of joy, uh, lasting happiness in a changing world. Therein contains conversations between His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And so I'd like to share some words of wisdom from First Archbishop Tutu regarding fear. Quote, we all have fears. Fear and anxiety are mechanisms that have helped us to survive. You know, if you did not feel fear when you saw a lion over there and you just walked merrily by, in next to no time, there would be no you. God has given us these things because God knew that we needed them. Otherwise, we would be fearless. And then we'd also be very stupid. And we would not be around very long. The problem is when fear is exaggerated or when, is, when it is provoked by something that is quite insignificant, end quote. And when asked how he handled fear and death threats during the days of apartheid, the archbishop said, quote, well, one did not do silly things like stand in front of the lit window at night. But one had to say to God, if I'm doing your work, you better jolly well protect me. End quote. Do you see the shift? Tutu understood himself and the world around him with wisdom and grace and faith. So this is our call to joy today. The Dalai Lama reminds us to be grateful. Be grateful. Every day, think as you wake up and remind yourself, and this is the Lama's quote, I am fortunate to be alive. I have a precious human life. I'm not going to waste it. Let me do that again, and uh, I invite you to repeat out loud if you choose. I am fortunate to be alive. I have a precious human life. I am not going to waste it. It is also noted in the Book of Joy that both men move through each day expressing gratitude, including first for each other. The Archbishop greets almost every new experience with the word wonderful. And it is indeed the ability to see wonder, surprise, possibility in each new experience and each encounter that is a core aspect of joy. Isn't that wonderful? Would it, would it be, um, this is my, this is my charge to, to you. Think to yourself, no matter what at first is coming toward you, as you move into your experience, moment to moment, say to yourself, or to the experience out loud, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? It causes a shift in our first responders to one of embracing with love and compassion and with joy. Isn't that wonderful? You know, we are blessed to reside in a spiritual community which embraces life. And it embraces life in love and in joy. We are grateful to have this perfect time in technology as we stay visual, we stay in communion. We see animation in real time. 
It gives a fuller experience to our life right now. Do we miss the personal contact? Oh, yeah, I know I do. I know I do. But this is the way right now. And isn't it wonderful? We've been given divine capabilities to transform our lives through the power of mind. And that power supports us through all experiences, no matter what the appearance. And we can do it. We can get through it. We can learn from it. We can be empowered through it with ease and grace and in safety. This life is too precious to waste on the trivial. It's too precious to waste on the images and beliefs that would divide. It is too precious to waste on that which would diminish your life and ultimately our world. So my friends, let's live this life in greater joy. Let's live this life with deep abiding gratitude for the good that there is. Let's love ourselves so deeply and completely that the only reflection the world receives from us is joy. Now that calls for us to live honestly. Honest, truthful, heartfelt. So if you can't feel it, Know what I'm saying? If you can't feel it, it requires a little work on the first responders. Your life will be more wonderful than ever before once you can come from a heart that's filled with love and joy and knows that that's the truth of who you are. So let us say, Together, let this be my prayer. Just like every child, I know the perfect place because I'm guided with God's grace. I do have the faith. I know I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. So beloveds, and I mean that truly, you are wonderful beings. You are filled with grand ideas. You are filled with actions that are supportive, compassionate. Let them show themselves through you. Be the joy the world needs right now. And be the joy that your life requires of you right now. This week, I'm knowing blessings and love and joy. So pour your life in abundant measure. Pour it into all those you encounter. Choose to believe. Choose to believe. And as Reverend Connie Asquith affirmed this morning, all is God. Yes, it's that simple. I love you. I love me. I love my life. I love this teaching. I am so grateful. Isn't it wonderful? Namaste. And so it is.